Um, in this example, guys, if we want to find the x-y-intercept, we recognize this is a rational function. So to find the x-intercept, I'm going to make my life easy. I could put y equals 0 and do all the work like I already showed you. But we can also see that negative 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. So therefore, showing my, finding the answer without showing my work, subtract 5 divided by negative 4, I get a positive 5 fourths. To find the y-intercept, I'm just going to take my constant over my constant, right? 5 over negative 1, so I can see y is equal to um, a negative 5. Vertical asymptote, again, is the values that make the denominator equal to 0. Be careful. Yes, question? Remember, the x, y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, right? So if you plug 0 in for x, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. You're just left with 5 over negative 1. That's why I told you like when we did that first time, like it's always just constant over constant. Um, vertical asymptote is the values that make the denominator equal to 0, unless they get divided out. However, I look at this. Am I really going to be dividing anything out? I can't really factor these any further, right? Mm -hmm. So we're good. So we're just going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. The problem is, what the heck is the horizontal asymptote? So up to this point, you actually didn't need to be in class up to this point. Because we've already discussed how to find the x-intercepts. That's when y equals 0. We've already discussed how to find the y-intercept. That's when x is equal to 0. And we've already discussed how to find vertical asymptotes. So you've already know how to do everything up to this point. right? But now we've got to say, well, how am I going to find this um, horizontal asymptote? The only way that we learned how to do horizontal asymptotes so far is by understanding the parent graph and transformations. Right? Yeah. I did make this one. So therefore, what I want you guys to look at in this case is, um, well, all this is is a fraction. And a fraction represents what operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Division. division. So therefore, can I divide 2x minus 1 into negative 4x plus 5? I don't know. But I did learn how to do division last chapter, right? Or at least I refreshed that. So let's try it. Let's see what happens. I mean, let's pretend I'm like taking a quiz. I mean, I have no other options. Like, might as well try it. So we say, all right, how many times does 2x divide into a negative 4x? Negative 2. Negative 2 times 2x is going to be a negative 2x. Negative 2 times 1 is going to be a positive 2. Subtract your rows. There's a 4x. It has to be the same. Subtract your rows, you get 3. That is a remainder. Well, so what does that tell us? Well, if you guys remember, in algebra, in last chapter, that told us 2x minus 1 is not a factor of that, right? And therefore, you can't find the zeros. But guys, we don't care about factors and zeros right now. We want to know, you know, what we're trying to find is we just wanted to divide this. So we didn't really practice writing the quotient with a remainder last chapter because we didn't really want a remainder last chapter. That wasn't the purpose of us doing division. In this chapter, though, we actually, this remainder is actually going to be beneficial to us. Um, and in Algebra 2, hopefully that's something you guys reviewed, was how to write this answer with the remainder. The way to write the answer with the remainder is going to be quotient, I'll write this down in a second, plus the remainder over the divisor, which is the same thing as 3 over 2 times x minus 1 half minus 2. Right? If you just flip those around. Can, do you have to write the negative 2 in front? Could you put it behind? Right? Remember when you have a b, factor it out, right? What do you guys recognize? Where's this? So now it's, a re, now it's in reciprocal form. I just transformed the graph from rational to reciprocal form. That's helpful to me because, one, I, under, I can recognize the transformations. What are the transformations? What's the horizontal transformation? 1 half to the right. So if the vertical asymptote was at 0, now it's at x equals 1 half, which I already knew, right? What about my horizontal trans or my vertical transformation? Down to. So therefore, my horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 2. Yes? It's how many times 2x divides oh, yeah. into negative 4x. OK? Um, and last but not least, does anybody see negative 2 in the original problem? Was it actually in front of us the whole time? 
do we actually not actually have to do that to find negative 2? Does anybody see negative 2 in the original problem? It's there right in front of you. Yeah, it's the coefficients. It was right there in front of you the whole time. I don't know if we're going to talk about that. 